Stop drunk. They say that life is like a hurricane here in Duckburg, but what they don't tell you is whether or not that weather phenomenon brings along with it a monsoon of free market money or a cyclone of socialism. The 1989 video game DuckTales, developed and published by Capcom, was one of many Disney titles that the company would make for the NES in the late 80s and early 90s. Originally based off a series of comics by Carl Banks, DuckTales would premiere as a cartoon in 1987, and it's between the comics and cartoon that this game draws its influence. DuckTales the game follows Scrooge McDuck as he travels across five different parts of the world, recovering secret treasures in an attempt to become the richest duck on Earth. Seems like an admirable enough goal. What duck worth his feathers wouldn't want to become the wealthiest being on the planet? So is that it? Case closed? Is Scrooge's quest to amass wealth enough to make this game the crown jewel of libertarianism? Does it fit the bill to become the king of the free market crop? Well, let's not be too hasty. There's more to this old duck than you cane handle. Speaking of canes, that's not just something Scrooge carries along with him to look sophisticated. That's a weapon. Fortunately, the world in which Scrooge lives in doesn't have silly regulations about what kind of weapons you can travel with. Not to mention, Scrooge has his own personal aircraft and pilot who can fly him around without having to worry about some crazy FAA nonsense. If Scrooge wants to go to the Himalayas packing heat, he does it. And that's where we have part of the problem. Scrooge's method of acquiring wealth isn't through savvy investments and shrewd business dealings. This Scottish sociopath kills local inhabitants for jewels and diamonds. Scrooge spends this entire game impaling things in the head with his cane, bouncing off their skulls just to land on another creature to kill them as well. Now, of course, some of the jewels he picks up are out in the open. Most of these can be considered fair game as long as no one else has laid claim to them. For as we know, in John Locke's Second Treaties of Government, an object in the state of nature can be claimed via ownership when one mixes their labor with it. That labor, however, does not include an act of homicide, which comprises about 85% of Scrooge's in-game activities. But let's say you go through the entire game trying not to kill or injure anybody. Hate to say it, but that's not going to happen. Each of the game's five treasures are protected by a boss that you have to defeat in order to obtain that treasure. That means one of two things. Either one, the treasures belong to those creatures, or two, the creatures are guarding those treasures on behalf of someone else. No matter which way you carve this duck, those treasures don't belong to Scrooge. Now, if there's one thing libertarians like myself believe in, it's that the rule of law should apply equally to everyone, and the fewer laws, the better. But there are certain concepts, like the moral code against theft and murder, that even aged ducks have to abide by. So if anything, Scrooge isn't a free market capitalist, he's a criminal mastermind. DuckTales even has two hidden treasures you can find with enough exploration, both of which are locked away in massive treasure chests. What's that, you say? You don't have to kill anyone to get those treasures? Well, that's fair play to an extent. But let me ask you this in return. How did those treasures get into the chest? Someone had to put them there for safekeeping. Someone who was not Scrooge McDuck. The same someone who actually owned those treasures to begin with. On a fiscal level, Scrooge isn't even a proper participant in the free market. As a matter of fact, he's one of the worst examples you can look up to. Scrooge, as the origin of his name would suggest, is a thrifty miser of a man. Scrooge is reluctant to spend any money, and simply hoards it in a money vault in the form of liquid assets. Now, I'll be the first person to tell you that no Big Brother government entity should tell you what to do with your money. And it's always a good idea to have some liquid assets on hand, but Scrooge's money vault is a simply stupid idea. All that money sitting in one vault is just begging to be stolen. And indeed, many have tried. So Scrooge has to keep investing in more and more security for the vault, on top of maintenance to the building itself. Scrooge is actually losing money by keeping that vault built, when he could be investing in index funds, the bond market, and a diversified stock portfolio. It's almost like Scrooge doesn't care about actual wealth, as much as he cares about the status of wealth. Now, you may remember from back in the day, on my Emmy Award-winning appearances on 2020, I used to be a consumer reporter. And as my former ABC News crew and I can attest to, there's not an awful lot to DuckTales itself. As a matter of fact, the footage you're watching right now is of me speedrunning the game. That's right, Stossel's speedrunning skills on full display for you. The game could take a bit longer to beat if you go for the good ending by accumulating more diamonds. But even then, this game isn't going to take you very long to beat. What's here is very fun, and it doesn't last too long either. If there's anything that does last, it's the music. 
Say what you will about Scrooge's murder spree, but he does it to the backing of some amazing chip tunes. The theme from the moon stage is all the rage with the kids today, and likely will be for decades to come. So is DuckTales libertarian? <laughs> no, not by a long shot. Not every game about amassing wealth is also about heralding the perks of libertarianism. And while the game itself is fun while it lasts, it doesn't really last too long. But hey, it's not like I'm an anthropomorphic duck, so what do I know? Give me a break. Here's a little Stoss Drunk bonus for you. Considering my narration ran out before the game did, we're gonna continue with some live commentary here. Actually, not live, considering I've already recorded it, but here we're in the Himalaya stage. And you can see I'm trying to avoid certain things, but that mountain goat just got right in the way. Gave it to the other one, and we just dropped down here. And if you've played this level before, then you know that you just have to go right to the left here, Watch out for the spider, trick it so you can jump down underneath it, and then just pogo along the ice here, jump over the hockey player, and we ignore the diamond, because we're just going for time here, climb the rope, and then just take the... Well, I decided to dodge off to the side, but you can just take the hit. I was deciding to dodge it because I was going to uh, save some energy for the boss coming up here, because you can try to trick it out a little bit, and you'll see what I mean here, where we have to fight the abominable snowman. And we just pounce on him once here, then we're going to go for it again. Jumped a little too soon, twice there, but got him there. We're going to wait for him to get right there. Then we're going to do one more pogo here, and then finish him off right there. Get the treasure, which is some sort of Himalayan crown. And uh, that's going to be it for that level. Nice, quick, easy. And there's not too much left to this game, because again, pretty short. So we're just going to mass that with the rest of the money that we have. And it's all land clear, which essentially means that there's only one place left to go to finish this game. And that's returning back to Transylvania in Dracula Duck Manor. So because we've already gone to this stage, we already know the route that we're going to take. We jump over Webigale there because we don't want to get into a conversation with her. It's no time for talk when you're looking for money. So we kill the mummy duck there, adding to our total of kills and body count. But then again, I think he's undead, so does it really count? Besides, the undead don't actually exist. It was probably just a guy in a costume looking to scare us away. Gotta be a skeptic about these things. Jump into the mirror here, which teleports us down this path, which we've already been to before. And then we're gonna take on Dracula Duck. I was looking for an ice cream there for a second, so it slowed my time. The ice cream would have restored her health, just like in real life. So we bump Dracula Duck, and we take advantage of the invincibility frames here to get him a second time by bouncing through him. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Get him again, and that's only one more hit. But we're not going to take the chance with the invincibility here. Instead, we're going to wait for the bat and pogo and got him. So now we're trying to get some height here so we can jump onto the rope to beat Glomgold to the uh, to the top of the tower here so we can grab the treasure chest. And this is just a straight-up climb. And then we reach the end, jump and get it, and that's the entire game of DuckTales. Just like that. And so Scrooge is really happy that he's got money, more money to add to his vault, which, you know, whatever. As we already discussed, liquid assets and this abundance aren't really helpful, but he is happy about it. And we get a little newspaper article about him, too. Guess what we wanted. Scrooge remains the richest duck in the world. Daring explorer Scrooge McDuck has found the five legendary treasures, making him the richest duck in the world. Congratulations! 5,240,000. Now, if we got over 10 million, that would have got us the best ending of the game. Uh, but we really didn't need that. Because we found the, uh, the true wealth is in family. Which, <laughs> whatever. As they're gonna talk about here. We for, you know, we help too, say Huey, Dewey, and Louie. But Scrooge just, Scrooge doesn't need that. Well, he pretends he doesn't. But he goes, right lads, I couldn't have done it without you. I really am the richest duck in the world. And that's it. That's DuckTales. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, give me a break.